And now there was one other Optus Cup round seven game today. It was at the Sydney Football Stadium between South Sydney and South Queensland. Your commentators are Jason Taylor and David Tapp. Welcome to the Sydney Football Stadium in Sydney. Cool weather conditions prevailing for this round seven Optus Cup clash. The South Sydney Rabbitohs at home to the South Queensland Crushers. Only a small crowd in attendance. And uh, you're currently looking at the famous South Sydney mascot wearing jumper number 90. There's been a couple of changes to the South Queensland side, which we'll show you shortly. In the meantime, we now glance down at the players' tunnel on the western side of the ground and see Daryl Trindle leading out his beloved South Sydney Rabbitohs. There's the side for you to contest this match this afternoon. Brendan O'Meara, the fullback. The wingers are Marty Moore and Dean Amos. The centres, Don McLeod and Phil Howlett. David Penner, the 5'8". Halfback and captain, Daryl Trindle. Lock forward, Darren Burns. Second row is Paul Quinn and Michael Ostini. Front row, Matthew Parsons and Ian Rubin. Cole Skelly is the hooker for this afternoon's clash. And he's a fine young talent too, Cole Skelly. But Daryl Trindle has been in the best form of his career. He certainly has matured as a player in season 1997 and undoubtedly that has come as a result of him acquiring the captaincy of this side. The South Queensland Crushers now make their way onto the Sydney Football Stadium led out by their captain Craig Teven. Let's take a look at the side for you. Paul Hubbard comes in at fullback replaces Dave Watson who pulled out of the match. The wingers are Jason Hudson and Jason Vent. The centres Matt Toshak and Michael Egar. The 5-8 is Shane Cairns. Nathan Antonick, the halfback. The lock forward Craig Wilson. Second row is Steel Retchless and Andrew Hamilton. John Jones and Mark Tukey. The front row is Craig Teven, his hooker and captain. Clinton O'Brien, who was named at uh, in the front row wearing jumper number eight, is out. He's replaced by Mark Tukey. I'm joined in commentary by North Sydney captain Jason Taylor once again here at the Sydney Football Stadium. And our referee for this afternoon's first grade clash is Kelvin Jeffs. There he is on screen. And the Crushers are going to be defending the northern end of the Sydney Football Stadium. Jason Taylor, an important match for both sides. It certainly is. As, as you said, David, there's, there's not a big crowd on hand, but the teams have got to lift themselves and, and, and play with the enthusiasm and intensity that's, that's going to be needed to win the game here today. I'm very much looking forward to watching a couple of my former teammates play in Craig Wilson and Matt Toshak, both... Very good players, Craig Wilson, very talented with the ball in his hands, and Matt Toshek, a very strong running centre, so looking forward to see them go around. I haven't seen them play yet this year for the Crushers. I saw the uh, Crushers outfit play Sydney City here in the first round, and they played pretty well that day too. In fact, they skipped away to a fairly handy lead early on. And South Sydney, they've had a, a pretty satisfactory year so far, stringing together a couple of wins. So now referee Jeffs blows time on and Trindle gets the action underway and straight down to the South Queenslanders and hitting it up for them is John Jones today playing in the head gear and he's tackled some 15 out from his own try line. The players right in centre field, South Sydney's defence is eager at this early stage. Darrell Trindle probably the man again for South Sydney, he's been their best player in the games that I've seen them play this year and we played against them only a couple of weeks ago won the game fairly convincingly but he's such a dangerous player especially late in the tackle county he, he's doing most of the general play kicking for them and he, he gets the ball in his hands and if he, he sees half an opportunity he's not scared to go for it on the last tackle there's a nice ball that was passed by don saunders playing in jumper number 14 for the south queensland side so they've changed their run on side from the team they did this the kick goes down deep into south sydney territory and falling back for the rabbits is brendan o'meara he charges back at the crushes defensive wall He's brought the ground nine metres out from his own try line from Pender. The football now goes to Marty Moore, who comes in from the left wing looking for some work. He, he went backwards there, if anything. He's tackled right in front of his own goalpost, five metres out. Now it's Dean Amos, called up into first grade. Did uh, hope that he'd start the year in first grade at halfback, but that hasn't worked out for him. There's Jeffs giving the South Sydney side a penalty early in this game, only 90 seconds into the match now. And Jason Taylor will take a look at the replay there. We're just holding it. Amos down a little bit too long there. Matt Toshak, the culprit. Gives the penalty away, and that's the easy way to get the ball out of your own territory with a penalty. Trindle kicks into the touch. It's amazing how some, some clubs have, have a great depth of talent in one position. Craig Field left the Rabbitohs, and, and Daryl Trindle's taken his spot at halfback, and they've also got Dean Amos playing on the wing, who is a very good halfback himself, so... I'm sure they'd love to spread that talent around in a few other positions as they make a mistake. There's a correct ruling by Kelvin Jeffs. The ball went to ground and Michael Ostini for South Sydney fell onto it. He was clearly in an offside position. 
So the correct decision there by Jeff South Queensland get the penalty. Here's the replay now. You be the judge. The ball went to ground. A loose pass. In fact, David Penner trying to get it. The player in jumper 11 is Ostini, who was clearly in front of David Penner. So the Crushers are going to have a penalty shot at goal now. And the goal kicker is going to be Jason Hudson who is a real speed machine for this Crushers outfit if he can get the football in some space has uh, been known to make the odd mistake though and it's a pretty difficult kick for him too he's 35 metres out and about 10 metres to the right of the uprights no score on the board looked like a bit of a set play gone wrong for the Rabbitohs there they they got the penalty when Toshek held the player down in the tackle and it was a perfect way to, to get out of their own half and get down to the Crushers into the field and on the first Second tackle, they, they spilled it and unluckily offside, you, you see the ball on the ground, you, the natural thing is just to dive on it straight away, gave the penalty away and Hudson looking to get the two points. So Hudson now has the ball placed on the mound, 35 metres out. You can see he's a study of concentration and this could be a good confidence booster for the Crushers. Oh, one of the worst kicks you'd ever see. The ball probably only left the ground by some five metres. It's missed by a long way. It was certainly not a kick that came out of the Jason Taylor goal-kicking coaching manual. So South Sydney come up with it fortuitous for them. And as Darren Burns now tackled 12 out from his own try line. I saw some highlights of the game the Crushers played in last week against the Gold Coast. Ended up losing the game. But the, the scores were locked. Midway through the second half and Jason Hudson kicked the goal from the sideline to put the crushers ahead. Certainly didn't strike that one as, as well as he did the one last week. Inside ball to Michael Ostini who's tackled 32 out from his own try line on the fifth tackle. It goes back to Cole Skelly who puts in a clearing kick. He kicked it from inside his own 40 metre area. And going back for South Queensland is Paul Hubbard who came into this game as a late replacement for Dave Watson. Kiwi international fullback not able to take his place in the starting lineup and they'll very much miss the talent and experience of Watson here today, the Crushers. Kelvin Jeffs awarding a penalty to the South Queensland side. South Sydney lying all over the tackle player. Matthew Parsons, and here's the replay, Jason. Parsons across the top. Yeah, it's very, very similar to the penalty at the other end. Jeffs just sent, stamping his authority in that area. He wants him getting up, playing the ball quickly. Been a lot of talk about the 10 metres with the referees this week as well. So the penalty is in the game so far after five minutes of play. 2-1 in favour of South Queensland, no score on the board as we see big John Jones hitting it up one of the more experienced South Queensland players, 35 out now from the South Sydney line and a good attacking opportunity for them as big Mark Tukey steams onto the ball, Michael Ostini coming across the top for South Sydney to stop that forward from gaining any more ground so South Sydney very quick moving up in defence, Trindle leading the way there by example as they tackled Andrew Hamilton, they work a short blind side now it's with Michael Eager 25 out from the Rabbits try line and South Queensland now with an ideal chance to use the football throwing long passes excellent tackle there by Phil Howlett for South Sydney who got up on his man very quickly they worked the eastern side of the ground through John Jones he thought he had some space to work there but it was to no avail for him that's the last tackle says Jeff so South Queensland will go to the air undoubtedly through Shane Cairns their 5'8th an ordinary looking kick that didn't go anywhere really and coming up with it now for South Sydney will be Darren Burns. So the changeover of possession, the Rabbits deep inside their own danger zone, 19 out from their own line, from Trindle. Again, they use the ball to big Don McLeod, the cowboy. That was a forward pass to his winger, Marty Moore. He went into touch anyway. Good tackle by Jason Vent for the South Queensland side, but the ball did drift forward, Jason Taylor. Drift forward? I, I think he was lucky, lucky not to be penalised for deliberate forward pass to a player in an offside position. He just handed the ball to him in front of him. South's so looking intent on moving the ball wide early in the tackle count and it hasn't worked for them so far. They did it on that, that tap play and, and build it, get, giving a penalty away and then the forward pass there. They just get back to a few simple hit-ups and get a kick downfield. Darrell Trimble's got a good kicking game. And so it's back into the game. So South Queensland win the scrum, now it's Michael Eager to get up and play it for the Crushers. 27 metres out from the South Sydney line, they work the blind side through Nathan Antonick who links up with Andrew Hamilton. South Sydney's defence is good at this early stage, no score on the board after about 7 minutes of play here. Now John Jones runs hard and straight, he gets the legs pumping. Matthew Parsons the tackler for South Sydney as well as Ian Rubin. 
Antonik again throws the ball to Teven. He darts across field. A cutout pass that was picked up on the far side of the field. The South Sydney defenders there in numbers, including Phil Howlett and Dean Amos. So now the crush is a good attacking opportunity for them. From Teven, it now comes to a support player that saw Daryl Trindle well and truly up in his face. Good defence by South Sydney. They're very aggressive in that department of the game. On the fifth tackle, Jeffs has the five fingers up in the air. There's a good pressure kick. A number of crushes players racing through. There's a good bounce for them, and that is going to be a try for the South Queensland side. Andrew Hamilton comes around and promotes the football, puts it down directly behind the black dot. What about that for a bounce? It was handballed back to Hamilton, who found himself in space. There were no defenders in sight. We see tries scored in that minute so often now, don't we? The, the players who go up for the bomb... They don't, they don't try and catch the ball, they, they jump high and, and knock it back, look to knock it back to players on their own team in support coming through. Probably was, wasn't copybook that one, but the result was done. I like the way he dummy to put the ball down there and just continued around right under the black dot. So 4-0 in favour of the South Queensland Crushers at the Sydney Football Stadium. Eight and a half minutes gone, and now Hudson will have the chance to convert from right in front, 11 metres out. As you watch another replay of big Andrew Hamilton strolling over, that's a dream try. Maybe he thought after Hudson's first attempt he needed it right under the black dot. That little dummy put down and keep running. That was a shocker of a kick. So uh, we wait now for Hudson from right in front. He must get this surely. He could throw it over. No problems with that one. The flags go up. So as a result, the South Queensland crushes. Six leading South Sydney nil on the scoreboard. Nine minutes gone in this first half. South's really dug their, their own grave there. They, they had two opportunities to get the ball off their own line and wanted to move the ball wide in early tackles and, and push the pass. Firstly giving a penalty away and then the second time a forward pass, which gave the crushes the opportunity. The crushes kicking game's been a little bit ordinary, but that one was perfectly placed. I agree with you. I think South's look an infinitely better team when Trindle runs with the ball and tries to create something. They're obviously trying to get it out to McLeod as a priority, who can make a bust and offload. He's had a pretty good season in 97, the big fella. So South Queensland in possession deep inside their own territory. After the kickoff, there's a high tackle. Kelvin Jeffs will call the player out. It may have been Ian Rubin. The other Rabbitoh in the tackle was Cole Skelly. Let's take a look at the replay for you now. Ian Rubin being called out by Jeffs. And it was the big fellow, Rubin across the top, not overly malicious. Worthy of a penalty, would you say, Jason? Yeah, we're worthy of a penalty. It's part of the rules these days. If the, the arm involved in the tackle touches anywhere in the head, it's going to be a penalty, and, and I think that's the way it should be. You describe it as careless, not reckless, though. So South Queensland find touch, 38 from their own trial line, 38 out as John Jones takes the hit up for them. 3-1, the penalties favouring South Queensland after 11 minutes of play here at the Sydney Football Stadium. They get it up almost to the halfway line now. South Queensland, Cole Skelly busy in defence for South Sydney. That was Retchless getting up to play it for the Queenslanders. Now the ball being turned back on the inside of the try scorer, Andrew Hamilton. Nice ball! Good play by South Queensland. Now on the attack is Jason Vent for them. And a desperation tackle by the Rabbits fullback, O'Meara. Snuffing that out, it looked to be a certain try. And now they use the back line, deeply set and long passing. It goes on the outside now to Matt Toshak, who got the ball away. And this is certainly going to be another South Queensland try to Jason Hudson on the far side of the field, who does his best to bring the football down around behind the goalpost. Almost made a mess of it, but nonetheless, a try to Jason Hudson. Good football by the Crushers. South Sydney defence, ordinary. I thought Vent had bombed it on the right-hand side. He had, he had Hubbard inside him. And he made that run. But when they've got the ball out to Hudson, he's got a great left foot step, Jason Hudson. That's a great ball there. And then here's Vent. He's got Hubbard on the inside there, and I thought he may have given him the ball. There was a South player coming across. Maybe they don't, they don't score there anyway, but they played it well. A nice ball from Toshak. And the left foot step from Hudson. That's obviously why he's playing on the left wing. He can head for that sideline and bang inside his opposite man. And he knows he's struggling a little bit with the goal kicking, so he's trying to get around under the post as well. Why not? If you're the bloke who uh, converted from four to six points, you may as well make it easy for yourself. So 10-0 South Queensland lead, 28 minutes out from half time in this game. And I think the Rabbits would be shell-shocked, Jason Taylor. You talked about the fact that Souths were quite keen to spin the ball out wide. South Queensland doing the same thing, and for them it's working. Well, I think the difference is South Queensland are doing it in the right end of the field. 
they're getting down in South Sydney Territory before they're doing it, whereas Souths are doing it 20 metres out from their own line. So when you come up with a mistake there, you're immediately under enormous, under enormous pressure. So Hudson now has his third shot at goal in this game from 12 metres out, 10 metres to the left of the uprights. He's pushed that across the face of goal. So no change. It's still 10 nil in favour of South Queensland. 27 and a half minutes remain in this first half. And Souths have got to hit back quickly. A couple of fresh troops going on for the Rabbits. Michael Francis in jumper number 15 and Peter Driscoll in 14. Driscoll had a good start to the season. He'll add some, some starts to the South Sydney pack. And Daryl Trindle now from the halfway line set to recommence play. John Jones again, a very willing front rower, puts his hand up and takes the hit up again for them. Teevan at acting half. He now fires the ball off to Mark Tukey playing in jumper number 15. Players right in centre field, some 31 out now from the South Queensland try line. And the crush is looking pretty good in this game so far. David Penner getting across in defence there for South Sydney. And we'll get back towards the eastern side of the field. John Jones passed the football to Nathan Antonick who was tackled. Now from Teevan, he fires the ball off to Tukey, who winds up the big legs and popped a beautiful pass there to Toshak. But referee Jeffs calls the, the action back. Picked it up on the bounce, Toshak, I think. It just may have gone forward from the hands. This is Tukey in jumper 15, who's had a good game. Yeah, the ball was uh, shaken loose. Toshak did pick it up off the ground. It was pretty line ball, really. It was, it was. Bit of a tough call, but I'm sure Souths are happy to get a break, and they just want to settle down now, control the ball, try and put the crushes under a bit of pressure. Now Phil Howard in possession, following a long pass from Dean Amos, who came in from the right wing. So the Rabbits now 35 out from their opponent's try line. Next man up for South Sydney is Michael Ostini, who offloaded to big Don McLeod. He can pop a ball and stand up in a tackle. Cole Skelly at acting half. He calls on his lock forward, Darren Burns, to do some work. John Jones in there. Burns was felled, Kelvin Jeffs blows the whistle and I think you'll find John Jones has uh, semi-apologised there to the South Sydney lock forward he's been cautioned by Jeffs as you can see not normal to see John Jones playing in headgear as we now wait for the replay, you can be the judge at home and that was uh, an angle that didn't really show us what occurred here's the other angle, South Sydney lock forward Darren Burns yeah it was just a big bear hug around the, around the melon Pretty much fell into it, Burns, didn't he? But Jones definitely got him around the head, so generally goes to see. It's interesting that they're taking the shot for goal. And the sort of team who likes the ball in their hands with Daryl Trindle as captain. Wouldn't have been surprised if they took the quick tap there and moved the ball around, tried to get over the try line. So Cole Skelly will attempt this shot at goal. There's the penalties for you. South Queensland three, the Rabbits two. We're 24 and a half minutes out from half time. 10 nil in favour of the Crushers. And uh, Matt Manning's doing, been doing most of the goal kicking for Souths this season. He played in reserve grade today, or in second grade, which, by the way, the Rabbits won 24 10 over the Crushers. So Skelly now has his chance to take over the goal kicking duties. 22 out he is from the goal post and about 10 metres to the left of the uprights, kicking towards the scoreboard or northern end of this venue. Important kick. Souths have at least had the chance to regroup whilst his kick is being taken. It leaves the boot, doesn't look too bad in flight. That's a good kick by Cole Skelly. So it brings the deficit back to eight. It's South Queensland 10, the Rabbits 2. 23 minutes and 48 seconds out from half time. Kicks the ball very nicely, Cole Skelly. It's not the first goal he's kicked for the Rabbits this year. He kicked a couple of goals from very wide positions in the game we had against the Rabbitohs at North Sydney Oval only a couple of weeks ago. So now we see Jason Hudson for the Crushers kicking off and the ball sails down to Phil Howard who couldn't handle it, thumped it back to Dean Amos who picked it up fortuitously for the Rabbits and Amos has tackled 15 out from his own line by Don Saunders for the Crushers. They've really, really got to get a move on South Sydney, it's been an ordinary start to this match by them. There's a good bullocking run by Michael Francis, who's only been on the park a couple of minutes. Just a bit of communication was needed there as, as Howlett was under that ball from the kickoff. I think it was going to carry 
over the sideline on the full, which would have given the Rabbits a penalty on halfway. It's hard for him to know where the sideline is as he's running back. If one of his teammates had have just said to him, let it go, I'm sure they would have enjoyed taking the this has, been the the best, this has been the best set of six by South Sydney in the game so far. That's the fifth tackle as Cole Skelly gets up to play it. Goes back to Tricky Trindle who puts boot to ball. Not an overly great kick though. It was fielded for South Queensland by Paul Hubbard who now brings it out to be 22 out from his own try line. Teban goes straight into acting half. Works a short blindside here at the Sydney Football Stadium. In the wing three-quarter, Jason Vent gets up the play. Now it's from Jones to a support player. Gee, some heavy defensive work going in there by Paul Quinn for South Sydney. Now in possession for the Crushers is Andrew Hamilton, who scored a try a short time ago from Antonick. Now it's with Big Tukey, who's been a good player for the Crushers so far in this game. He's certainly providing some go forward for the South Queensland outfit. Now back to Antonick, who puts boot to ball. Brendan O'Meara is back there for South Sydney. He's forced to go back into his own in-goal area, picks it up cleanly, turns and charges back at the South Queensland defensive ball. He is tackled, though, nine out from his own try line. Trendle and acting half. Long pass from Marty Moore. And was impressed with the last set of six South Sydney had in an attack. They need to remount that kind of, of progress. Lots of big men going forward before they go wide. Amos now tackled right in the centre of the field. 19 out from his own line. Yeah, we talked about that earlier, didn't we? The they look to move the ball wide again early. They, they must feel that they've got a bit of an opportunity on this left-hand side. They've spread the ball here a number of times. That time they didn't come up with the mistake that they've been making. Well, that's the sort of thing Driscoll. they're looking for, isn't it? Yeah, that's the, the thrust that I was talking about when I described Driscoll coming onto the field for you. He does provide the starts. So there's a long pass from David Pennant to Phil Howard. They're in some space, the Rabbits. Beautiful footwork by Phil Howard. He's away. He comes to the fullback, passes to a support player who couldn't handle it. The support player was David Penner. And certainly Paul Hubbard, the young crushers fullback there, doing as he was required to do. Good run by Phil Howard. The Tongan player who played in the 1995 World Cup for Tonga. Replay, nice step off the right foot there. I've got to say that Phil Howard, I thought he bombed this a little bit in the way he just stopped as he passed the ball. He allowed Hubbard to slide off him and, and on to Penner. If he had him just kept running Howard and, and drawn Hubbard right in, it would have been a simple pass and I'm sure Penner would have hurled the ball and gone in for a try. Now South Queensland receive a penalty, 40 out from the South Sydney try line. And... Burns was the player involved there. 4-2. The penalties favour South Queensland at this stage of the game. 20 minutes out from halftime. They spread the ball to the right that time, South Sydney. But, David, as you've been mentioning, before they did it, it was a great hit-up from Driscoll. He hit the ball up on this left-hand side in the way you've been talking about. They ought to be doing it. And then they spread the ball wide on the last tackle. And I, I think that hit-up was the key to it, instead of just moving it before they're going forward. Hudson, first man to take it from the tap restart after receiving the pass from Teban. He now, from acting half, shows the ball to Antonick, who immediately, immediately passed to Danny Nutley, playing in jumper 17 for the crust of this afternoon. Good pressure here from South Queensland. They're only nine metres out from the South Sydney try line, and the Rabbits had better not let them in again, otherwise they're going to have enormous trouble in coming back to win this game. There's a mistake by South Queensland on the far side of the field. I think it was uh, Toshak making an error and as a result of scrum will pack here's the replay Jason Taylor no it was Shane Cairns in fact no it was Toshak I was right the first time handling errors in the game 3-2 to South Sydney I've been sold the dummy there by Jason Taylor <laughs> as the scrum now packs gotcha. South Sydney feed thank you for your support too Trindle long pass the Rabbits have got to put something on and fairly quickly plenty of time left in the game mind you they trail by 8 on the scoreboard if you may have just joined us, the Crushers 10 lead South Sydney 2, and we're 18 and a half minutes out from half time in this game. There's a pass to Big Don McLeod, the Cowboy. If I've got one criticism of McLeod, having seen him play several times this year, he very seldom is running when he takes the ball. You watch for that, Jason, and see if you agree as this game goes on. He, he jogs. Touch touch is in here. He's calling out one of the Crushers players. South Sydney plays down. Craig Teban is being called up the Crusher's skipper along with Danny Nutley. And the replay here for you now. South Sydney in possession. 19 out from their own line. And 
we've now seen uh, this crushers player sent to the bin which is Nutley Danny Nutley so South Sydney get the penalty and now Daryl Trindle will have the chance to find touch 20 out from his own try line and I've noticed as I'm sure you have watching at home South Sydney's tempo in this game has picked up considerably since Driscoll has been on the park and I've also got to say Francis has provided some go forward for them so now Trindle serves the ball up to Driscoll the man to which I was just referring he's pulled up one meter short of the halfway line Cole Skelly now that's David Penner offloading to Michael Francis Trindle across field they work it through Darren Burns haven't made any major ground here they're one meter on the South Queensland side of halfway as we now see Paul Quinn for the Rabbits take it upfield he got it back to Trindle who started the goose step but the crushers defense was equal to the task Penner experienced player represented Italy in the World Sevens here at the start of the year now it goes back to Trindle for the high kick on the fifth tackle the kick is certainly hanging up there for a long time. The crushers come up with it. Nice ball it's, from Toshak. To it Hubbard. was. It was. Hubbard now is the man that's done nothing wrong in this game so far. Getting up to play it for the crushers. He's occupying the fullback role that was left vacant by Dave Watson, who withdrew from the game. The lock forward now. Craig Wilson gets up to play it. And this is Teven, Queensland origin player leading by example they're 42 out from their own try line South Queensland they lead 10-2 on the scoreboard 16 out from half time so in the center of the Sydney football stadium on the fifth tackle South Queensland will undoubtedly kick it goes back to their lock forward Wilson who puts a little kick in he's going to regather for them nice piece of play by him Craig Wilson comes up with it. That's another six tackle to, tackles to South Queensland. Eager passes the ball to Anthony, who finds some space to work in. He's tackled nine out from the South Sydney line by Brendan O'Meara and Michael Ostini. Wilson at acting half. Then it goes to Teven. Now to Shane Cairns, who steps and beat the first tackler. Then to Matt Toshak, who's in some space. He offloaded to Hubbard back on the inside, who was tackled on the far side of the field. Now it goes back to Craig Teven, taking it first man off the ruck. And in possession now for the crushes is still Retchless, who's, who's pulled up about nine metres out from the South Sydney try line, right in centre field. Now from Craig Teeban, the crushes back on the attack again. Toshak will score a very soft try. Well, South Sydney's defence is non-existent here today, and they're paying for it dearly. That'll take the crushes to 14 points. And South Sydney, two with a kick to come. Toshak scores another try. It was just the doubling up of the sets of six, wasn't it? Craig Wilson put that little chip over and got six again. And the pressure just mounted in the end. They tend to use that sprint up defence. Daryl Trindle sprints out of the line and tries to cut the attack off. But if they, if the opposition can get the ball out past him, it tends to leave the, the other defenders out on the edges in a little bit of bother. He hits the hole very nicely, Matt Toshek. He just ran straight onto that one between the two players and brought it around. It's a good point you make. The um, South Sydney outside men sprinting up trying to nullify the advantage that the crushers have when they're in possession and they're missing tackles they're paying for it dearly an ordinary performance by the rabbits so far in this game south queensland looking pretty sharp when they've got the ball they're looking organized anyway they lead 14 to 14 and a half minutes out from half time in this round seven optus cup clash at the sydney football stadium and we thank you for your company on sports australia now it's Jason Hudson having another shot at goal. And he's some 17 metres out and 25 metres in from the Eastern touchline. Successful with one from three so far. His first shot at goal today would rank as one of the all-time worst. There it goes in flight by Hudson and across the face of goal again. So, no change to the scoreboard, but they still do have a 12-point lead. South Queensland 14, South Sydney 2. And the Rabbits will have to mount a Herculean comeback. Just seem to be struggling to get the formula right, the Rabbits, at the moment, don't they? They've, they've got some forwards out there who are willing to hit the ball up. They've got some good backs in Penner and Trindle and Howlett who can run with the ball. O'Meara. 
the formula just doesn't seem to be working at the moment. They're, they're tending to go f wide before they go forward and, and making mistakes, putting themselves under pressure. Well, Craig Simon uh, playing off the bench today. He's played a fair bit of 5 8 as a part of the run-on side this year. I just wonder if that's disrupting them at all. Not saying that Penn is lacking in experience. He's not. But uh, Craig Simon's had a fair year so far for the Rabbits. So uh, he may make a difference when he comes on. The crush is back in possession. Antonik turns the ball back on the inside to the centre three-quarter. Michael Eager, who's tackled five metres on his own side of halfway. Craig Wilson having a good game for the Crushers today. Creating some havoc, trying to pop balls. That's the fifth tackle. The kick goes in from the Crushers. And it will float into touch. 15 out from the South Sydney try line. It'll be a South Sydney feed. 12 and a half minutes out from half time in this game. You mentioned the Crushers looked organised, they're playing it well aren't they, they haven't made many mistakes in their own end haven't given South Sydney many opportunities at all the Rabbits tend to come up with a few mistakes and, and they're giving the Crushers all the opportunities and they've made the most of most of them 14-2 so Souths win the scrum Marty Moore gets up now to play it for the South Sydney Rabbitohs, the famous Red and Greens from Redfern who are looking to turn things round. They're now flush with cash. They're saying for the first time, well, in a long time, the Rabbits, and looking at going on a buying spree for season 1998. They've still got the football in this set of six. It's now Big E and Ruben charging onto it for them, tries to pop the pass. No, it wasn't Ian Ruben. I'm sorry, it was Michael Francis, who has played well since he's been on for them. From Trindle, it now goes to Penner, who pushed the head down. In a burrowing-like run, that's the fifth tackle. Now it's with McLeod, who was able to stay away from tacklers, got the ball away to Trindle, who puts the kick in, and it's going to go into touch 35 out from the South Queensland try line. And he didn't kick that from inside his own 40, so it'll be a crusher's feed, Jason Taylor. Yeah, he didn't kick that as well as he would have liked, though. Really, probably looking to put it right down into the corner, but that, that's a better set of six from them. They moved the ball around, they had a look, but they didn't push any silly passes. Just persist with that sort of thing. Hopefully the Crushers may come up with a mistake and then they get an opportunity. 11 minutes out from half time, the Crushers win the scrum. Now it's with Hudson, good step Hudson. He's away before being ankle tapped. Good play by Hudson who is an explosive attacking player when given the opportunity. Now it's big John Jones who's had a fine game for the Crushers so far today. He's been their most consistent forward this year along with Teven. A mistake there in the play of the ball area. Anthony came up with the ball for the Crushers. But Jeff says, let's put the scrum down. We'll now take a look at the replay for you. You be the judge. It's John Jones getting up to play it. And just an awful play of the ball. He should know better. South Sydney scrum feed. And loose. Trindle feeds it for the Rabbits. Still got to go forward first, South. So they don't want to spread the ball from one side to the other without making any forward progress. Now with Phil Howlett, who made a decisive break early in this game. I'd like to see him in space again. He's got some pace. Now it's Ian Rubin charging onto the ball. A player born in Russia, which is a rarity for an Optus Cup footballer. South Sydney keep the ball alive now, and they're looking pretty good on the western side of the ground. They come... Crusher's sliding defence was there, though, to stop the movement. Back on the inside, they pass the ball. And the Rabbits desperate to put a try on. They trail by 14 points to two on the scoreboard. Now it's with Trindle, who links up with Paul Quinn. And now it's big Don McLeod, who gets the legs pumping this time. He hit the ball at pace and offloaded to Ian Rubin, who finds himself charging at the corner. Strong run by him. He's tackled just five metres short. Dean Amos and also McLeod at acting half. McLeod ended up saying, I'll take the ball. And he's pulled up a couple of blades of grass short. Now it goes back to Trindle, the big Peter Driscoll. He charges forward before losing the ball. Trindle comes up with it, but that will be the turnover of possession. It's an easy trap to fall into that one. Trindle knowing that South desperately need to get a try on the ball, so on the board. So instead of putting a grubber into the end goal or a bomb there and taking the chances to something, he tried to put Driscoll through a hole. Last tackle turnover. Probably not the result they're looking for. There's a handling error. South's four, South Queensland three. We're eight and three quarter minutes out from half time. 14-2. The Crushers lead the Rabbits on the scoreboard. And South Queensland back in possession on their own side of halfway. In fact, 40 metres out from their own line now from Antonik. 
The ball goes to their lock forward, Craig Wilson, who's had a busy game, been very effective in attack, provided some variety for them. Anthony could acting half. Teven, who has uh, extracted himself from the acting half dummy half role and is really playing a halfback role in this game now. There's the clearing kick. It goes down to South Sydney's Marty Moore, who puts it on the boot, steadies it, and was tackled by Jason Vett for the crushes. Now it's Brendan O'Meara, steps off his right, straightens up the point of the attack before being tackled, 31 out from his own try line, and now they work the ball towards the eastern side of this ground. Ian Rubin accepts the pass off Daryl Trindle, and he's tackled by Teven around the legs and also Craig Wilson up high. Cole Skelly into acting half. Now the Rabbits continue on the attack, trying to keep the ball free. Trindle, inside ball for Driscoll. Steams upfield, five metres on the crisis side of halfway. That is the fifth tackle. He was tackled by Mark Tukey. Back to Trindle, who elects to run in his own. He's away, the little fella. Trindle, the winner with a wrist run. He's turned the ball back on the inside. Back to Trindle now. He'll score the very try that he started. I said earlier in the game, Trindle had the run more. He's done it, and he's cut it to pieces. Great try by the South Sydney skipper. Well, I said at the start of the game that he was dangerous on the last tackle if the defence didn't come up straight. And that was exactly what happened. See it here on the replay. One of the players came shooting out from dummy ass, so he decided to go himself. He's so quick. He only needs half a hole. It's a nice ball. An amazing inside. one back to Darren Boone as a long forward. Hudson just had no opportunity there. He had to stay on his winger. He takes Trindle to the single picks up. Just watch this pass yeah. of Trindle. Wham! He'll fling it back the other direction. Couldn't be easy to do. That's Burns, the lock forward, who's had a great game. Trindle throws the dummy to Dean Amos and crashes over for a nice try. So the Rabbitohs hit back, the kick now to come. They still trail by 14-6 on the scoreboard. And Cole Skelly with a difficult attempted conversion, 21 metres out from the goal post. And he's about 9 metres in from the Eastern touchline. Well, I'm tipping you find it hard to run and carry the football at the same time, Tappy, let alone pass it inside like Daryl Trindle. So you're probably right, it wouldn't be easy to do. You waiting for a comeback? Where can they do one? So Cole, Ske <laughs> Cole Skelly now, 21 out. I, I think we finished up uh, last week. I was about 3-1 up on you. So I guess it's only fair you should come back at me today. There's the kick from Cole Skelly floating towards the post. Unfortunately lacked a little bit of direction. So five and a half minutes out from half time. It's the Crushers 14 leading South Sydney 6. In fact, I think I hammered you 10-1 last week. There's a scoreline for you at the bottom of the screen. So Hudson now will place the ball on the mound in the centre of Rugby League headquarters and we'll get this game underway again with just five minutes remaining in the first half and South's at least showing they are going to be competitive in this match and hopefully from the point of view of their supporters anyway come back in the second half strongly Bristol gets up to play it for them Ian Rubin now hits the ball with great vigour storms upfield tackled by Antonik down low good run by the big fella inspiring stuff 38 out from his own try line now it's with Burns again. Been very impressed with this back row for South Sydney this year. Figured prominently in that try you just saw from Daryl Trindle. He was the support player. Now it goes back to Tricky Trindle who puts the boot to ball. And that is a very deep kick. Racing back for South Queensland is their fullback Paul Hubbard. There's a wall of South Sydney's defence converging on him. And it was Dean Amos that made the tackle. He grounds the Crushers fullback one metre out from his own line. Now it's Hudson who breaks away down the blind side. He has got some pace, this bloke. He steps back on the inside. He's got some support. But the Rabbits might come up with it here. South Queensland have saved the day. Well, what a pity. That was such a good run by Hudson. And they couldn't control the football. Coming up with it was Craig Wilson. They just went to sleep, the Rabbitohs, on the, on the far side of the field. They played so well to get down to the other end. The set of six was perfect. Trindle looked for the kick from inside his 40. It was a good one. And then Hudson picked up the ball from dummy half and just scooted up the side. And there's that step left foot again. We saw him put a right foot one on earlier so he can go off both feet. 
Wilson cleaned it up, otherwise South might have picked it up and gone on the counter-attack, but they've got the ball now from the scrum win. Dean Amos. He's tackled 41 out now from the Crushers try line. In the centre of the Sydney Football Stadium, South Sydney using the ball. And this is O'Meara chiming in, there's some good defence. Two players combining, now Marty Moore. They've got a roll on now, the Rabbits all of a sudden, they've got their little tails up. Skelly at acting half. Fires the ball away to Burns, who offloaded to Peter Driscoll. And Driscoll is tackled by Andrew Hamilton for the South Queensland side. We're only two and a half minutes out from half time, and this match Trindle sends the ball away to a support player. Craig Simon now on the park, who's got some numbers. He got it away to Phil Hallett, who's tackled five metres short of the line. So Craig Simon now could figure in the equation. It goes to Don McLeod, who takes it at first receiver. Dummy to kick, decided to float the ball to David Penner, who couldn't handle it. He had to go back a metre or two, puts the grubbing kick in. He was tackled after he kicked the ball. The crush has come up with it, though, and... Jeff saw nothing wrong with that tackle on the kicker. It was harmless stuff as we now watch Michael Egar hitting it up for the South Queensland side. 35 out from his try line. They just have little lapses, don't they, South? And now they've given a penalty away, which doesn't help. But it looks so good in the first couple of tackles of that set of six then. Just an ordinary pass from McLeod and, and Penner put a grubber kick through that probably was never going to amount to too much. Just got to put it together for a consistent period. And they're dangerous with the ball in their hands. They've got some backs who can play. Now Mark Prothero for the crushers. Teven puts himself back into the acting half roll. He throws it to Anthony. Now it's with Andrew Hamilton. who has been pretty impressive today. Anthony again works the ball with Teven. Now it's with the 5-8th Cairns. And South Queensland pulled up 19 short of the South Sydney try line. Teven again. Anthony. Now it's with Wilson, the lock forward. Oh, magnificent pass there. Popped the ball around the corner. The crosses are looking very good today in their attack. That's the fifth tackle now. And they might go close to scoring again as we see Hamilton out of acting half. Going very close to scoring. The South Sydney defenders hold him up though. And there's a penalty going to the crosses. They'll want to watch out for the quick tap here. And Jeff's not happy. He's calling Trindle out. I can't work out what that penalty is for there, David. We'll have a look at it now. Yeah, offside. Yeah, Skelly. Craig Simon. Yeah, it was certainly only back a couple of metres. And I think Trindle may have had something to say to referee Jeff's afterwards as well. So they'll have another shot at goal through their wing three-quarter, Jason Hudson. And if successful, they'll extend their lead to 16 points to six. We're less than a minute now out from half time. The Rabbits were just starting to look like a, a football team on a mission. The last 10 minutes of this first, first 40 minute stanza. And uh, they'll rue that sort of thing because the Crushers have been able to put potential two point on here, or two points on here. Their concentration just seems to drop, doesn't it, for a couple of minutes on end here and there throughout the game I thought when they were down the other end that they, they were going to get another try and we would have gone in at half time totally different looking game you know, if Hudson puts this over it makes it a little bit tough for the, for the Rabbitohs in the second half I agree they've got it all to do the Rabbits well, Hudson from almost right in front about 12 metres out hasn't kicked well today in he goes and again, it's been waved away. So the Crushers have a real problem with their goal kicking if they're relying on this man, who's been who's been uh, very good in attack today. But his goal kicking has really let the team down. So the scoreline here at halftime at the Sydney Football Stadium: it's the South Queensland Crushers 14, leading South Sydney six. As we now take you back to Brookvale Oval. Nice to have your company on Sports Australia. Welcome back to the Sydney Football Stadium. And South Sydney and the South Queensland Crushers now back on the field for the commencement of the second half. And there's the stats for you at half time. South Queensland 14, leading the Rabbits 6 for the Crushers. Andrew Hamilton, Jason Hudson and Matt Toshak all scoring tries. Jason Hudson having a bad day with the boot. He's been successful with one from five attempts. A couple of them sitters. For South Sydney, their one try to Daryl Trindle. And Cole Skelly has kicked the one goal. 
And repeating that Danny Nutley for the crosses was sent from the field by referee Jeffs in the first half. So the crush is a man down as we now see Hudson starting the second half of play here at the Sydney Football Stadium. Trindle immediately passes the ball to Michael Francis who hits it up to be tackled 21 out from his own try line. And I'm joined in commentary by Jason Taylor, North Sydney captain. Do you think the Rabbits can come back? The crush is down by a player. If, if they play 40 minutes like they played the last 10 minutes, I, I think they can. It showed when they put it together that they can score some points. Probably defensively is where they'll struggle if they can resist some of the mistakes that they were making in the first half and not give the crushers too many opportunities. And I'm sure we're going to have a close finish. So Hudson, who's handled the ball plenty of times today, the crushers winger, getting up to play it. That's now Paul Hubbard hitting it up for the crushers out of the acting half area. He was tackled right in centre field, 25 out from his own line. Now it's John Jones. Taken in a good tackle by Matthew Parsons for South Sydney. And Teven. The crush is advancing the ball upfield. And they're pulled up five metres short of the halfway line. Teven again. Now it's Antonik turning the ball back on the inside to Andrew Hamilton. And he makes it into the South Sydney side of, of halfway. Now it goes back for the clearing kick. Dean Amos is there for South Sydney. He picks it up. And Amos has tackled 22 out from his own line by Shane Cairns for the Crushers. And there's a penalty, Kelvin Jeffs awarding to South Sydney against Matt Toshak lying over the tackled player. And that would be the third, possibly even fourth time we've seen a penalty for that sort of indiscretion in the game so far. South's fine touch, 40 out from their own try line. And Cole Skelly takes the tap, restarts a Trindle who immediately served the ball up to Paul Quinn for the Rabbits. 14-6 in favour of the Crushers. South Sydney with it all to do. Long pass from Trindle to Matt Parsons, who's tackled right on the halfway line. Skelly offloading to Michael Ostini. Tackle was Antonik for the Crushers. Trindle to David Penner. Don McLeod now. Tackled by Anthony again. Trindle, across the field they come, the Rabbits. Inside ball, good pass to Amira, the fullback who hit the football at pace. And that's the fifth tackle. Cole Skelly plays it to Amira. South Sydney on the attack through Trindle. There's a beautifully weighted kick and good pressure. South Sydney's Don McLeod was there contesting the football. Neither he or the Crushers player could get to it properly and the ball sailed into touch. Five out from the South Queensland try line. So a bright start by the Rabbits, Jason. That was a perfectly placed kick, David. I often say how it's so easy to, to see what's going on from up here and, it, and it's a lot more difficult out there. But if the South players had have just held off that one, the Crushers winger would have been obliged to catch the ball and they could have just tackled him in touch. It was a perfectly placed kick. As I say, very easy to sit up here and and make these judgments. Seven, just put it up and, and the runners were coming through. 7-4, sorry Jason. The penalty is favour South Queensland at this stage of the game. Look at that. The kick for touch has failed to find touch. So South Sydney with a good chance now to go straight back on the attack. Brendan O'Meara keeps the ball alive to Daryl Trindle. He now works to the western side of the ground. Passes the ball to Phil Howlett who was in two minds. He wasn't sure what to do there. He was ended up ended up being tackled by Matt Toshak. Now it goes back to Trindle, who calls a player on the inside, and that player is Michael Francis for South Sydney. Tackled 21 out from the South Queensland try line. Skelly, Trindle, David Penner darts across field. Eventually passes it to Don McLeod. That was a short pass, though. Was separated by a couple of inches when he got the ball. Trindle. A cutout pass now that finds Paul Quinn for South Sydney. He keeps the ball alive. Dean Amos was chiming in. They couldn't handle. Phil Hallett couldn't save the day either. Ball goes into touch. Scrappy passage of play. Here's the replay. Jason Taylor. I think South is just falling into the trap here of, of trying to play the crushes from sideline to sideline because of the fact the crushes have got 12 men. They've just got to hit a couple of couple of forwards up into the defensive line, try and get them going back a little bit, and then they'll find those those holes will start to open up a little bit more easily. 
at the moment just going side to side and the crushes, even though they've only got 12, they can just slide across and cover it. Blood bin for John Jones, who has a gash on the forehead. He won't stay out of the action long, as tough as they come. And he's replaced in the pack by Mark Tukey for the crushes, playing in jumper number 15. They win the scrum, the South Queenslanders. Now it's Shane Cairns playing in the 5 8th role today. Anthony falls into the acting half area. This is Hudson. Got some pace off the mark too. He was tackled by Cole Skelly and Francis. Now this is Tukey. South Sydney inside the 10. Jeff's not copping that today. The Crushers receive a penalty on their own 40 metre line. Replay will show you clearly. Look at that. I mean, a lot of South Sydney players at least standing three metres in front of Kelvin Jeffs. They ask for that penalty. So Cole Skelly will take the tap restart now for the Crushers. Retzlis gets up to play the ball back to Skelly. Now it's Big Tukey. Barty run. Was able to bump away from the first couple of tacklers. Burns ended up getting them though in the long run. Now from Cairns, the ball goes back to Michael Egar. Falling on him across the top was Paul Quinn. The Crushers start to get a roll on here at the Sydney Football Stadium. They use the ball. Out wide, it's now with Andrew Hamilton, who tries to play it. He was inconvenienced here by David Penner. Teven now works the inside ball. It's been knocked down for South Sydney by Penner. So a scrum will pack Jason Taylor. Well, he took the odds to it, David Penner, didn't he? But 20 metres out from your own line, a few tackles gone already. You're basically just giving the, the opposition another set of six at your try line. The Crushers will be happy with that. They've got 12 men. They're happy to have the ball in their hands. Here's an attacking raid being launched by the South Queensland side. Long pass to Jason Hudson, who was comprehensively wrapped up there by Cowboy Don McLeod. Now from Anthony, it goes to Hubbard. Hubbard trying to break the first line of defence, was not able to do so. And he's pulled up 15 short of the South Sydney try line. Across the field they come again. South Queensland through still Retzless. 12 out from the Rabbits try line right in centre field and they're going to work this ball to the eastern side of the field. Western side of the field rather. Tukey now turns the ball back. Hudson's got it for South Queensland who was tripped accidentally by Phil Howlett. Six more tackles. Again it was David Penner got his hand on the ball. So Tukey once again finds himself back in possession. Clinging to his legs was Cole Skelly. Antonick. Teven. Cairns. Now it's Michael Eager. 14-6. The Crushers lead on the scoreboard. Eight minutes gone in this second half of play. Now Matt Toshak. Tackled nicely by Phil Howlett who read the play beautifully. Back to Teven. Now Antonick steps up his right foot. Hits the accelerator and turns the ball back on the inside. They keep it alive. The Crushers playing good football here today. The ball's gone to ground. Anthony's come up with it. And referee Jeff says six more tackles. So the Crushers, another outstanding attacking opportunity. Now it's with Michael Eager. And he's pulled up five short from the South Sydney try line. Steven darts across field. The big Toki Hill score. Too big, too strong. No chance of stopping in South Sydney. 18 points to six. South Queensland lead on the scoreboard. Eight minutes gone in this second half. 18 points to six. Kick to come for the Crushers. Well, the Crushers, the Crushers tackle, count, tackle count got nullified three times there. And in the end, it was big. Too. He's been playing well. He's so hard to stop. He's been making the yards up the middle all day for them. And why not use him on that sort of play? He's a big boy. And the South Sydney defence, there were two tacklers there. Had no chance of stopping him. He was a runaway locomotive. Looks like we've got to change a goal kicker. The halfback Nathan Anthony is going to take over after Jason Hudson had a, a bit of a horror first half. Kicking only one from five. So he's looking to make amends here, at least with this attempted shot at goal. Tukey, if memory serves me correctly, played for the Queensland under-18s team last year. He's a big boy and plays with maturity far exceeding his, his years. So yeah, Antonik now is the man that's going to take this shot of goal. They've sacked Hudson as a goal kicker. Antonik moves in, he chips at the ball 
and makes no mistake with it. So South Queensland advance on the scoreboard. Another two points for them. The crushes 20, leading South Sydney 6. And we've had nine and a half minutes gone now in this second half of play. And the Crushers, if you may have just joined us, playing with 12 men. Danny Nutley, their interchange player, was sent from the field about midway through the first half. You're looking at Teven, the Crushers skipper, who would be delighted with the way his side's going so far in this game. Trindle would be disgusted in the way the Rabbits are going as he kicks off for them. Good run there for South Queensland by Still Retchless. From Teven, the ball goes to Antonik. The crush is in possession, 30 out from their own try line. Tuki again with a charging run. Now it's Antonik being wrestled to ground by Matt Parsons for South Sydney. Next man up for the Crushers is Andrew Hamilton. And there's a break being made by Don Saunders. Saunders has got support. He got it back on the inside of the team and who couldn't handle it. So South Sydney fortuitously come up with the ball when they are once again at sixes and sevens in defence. They work the western side of the ground. There's a long pass from the lock forward. Darren Burns to his wingman, Dean Amos, who's tackled 39 out from his own try line. Phil Howlett from acting half off loaded the ball. To Michael Francis. Oh, this is very scrappy play by the Rabbits. A scrum will pack O'Meara. Contesting the ball comes up quite disgusted. They've been their, their own worst enemy, the Rabbits. They've been playing against the side with only 12 men. And they just haven't mounted any pressure. Apart from the putting ball pressure over. on themselves, Jason. That's right, isn't it? The Crushers are happy to have the ball. They're not going to do anything silly with it. They're just going to hang on to it. See the handling errors there. South have made nine to the Crushers, five. So the Crushers have another chance to launch an attacking raid on the Rabbits' try line. Young Anthony getting up to play it. He's had a good game for the Crushers. Been busy. So too is this man in possession, Teven. 21 out. Saunders wanted to go to acting half. Anthony said, I'll take the job on. Tukey now in possession for them. Pop the ball back to Retchless, who was able to dive on it for the Crushers. South Sydney outside backs, let me tell you, are a mile offside. Now it goes to Toshak, who was tackled by Howlett. They got the ball back on the inside to Hudson. Hubbard, the fullback, up at acting half. Teven now. A long floating pass to Saunders on the outside, who got the ball back on the inside. And this might be another South Queensland trying to mark Prothero. Double movement. Double movement, says referee Kelvin Jeffs. Mark Prothero not happy. Well, South Sydney, their defence is just not clicking at all, Jason Taylor. This is a good ball on the inside here. As this player catches the ball, the South player was coming up very quickly. He just turned it inside. Prothero charging at the line. Ian Rubin clinging to him. And no try, says Kelvin Jeffs. So... Now it needs to be Daryl Trindle that lifts this red and green side. They trail by 20 points to six on the scoreboard. Driscoll takes it up hard and straight for the Rabbits. He made a big difference when he came on in the first half. They need him out there. Now it goes back to Trindle who elects to run the football to the eastern side of the ground. And that's the sort of danger that Trindle represents when he runs with the football. Don McLeod at acting half. He gallops further upfield, gets the big legs pumping was tackled for South Queensland by Prothero. Now Cole Skelly goes for a run. Trindle! Trindle! Trindle's up now to the 10 metre line. And he's really started to inject himself now in the last couple of minutes. That's the fifth tackle. It goes back now to David Penner, who puts Boot the ball. But there for South Queensland was their fullback Hubbard. He's pretty safe at the back Hubbard, hasn't he? He hasn't... Any mistakes, anything that, that he's been asked to do, he's done well. Yes, he's been very safe back there. Big pair of boots to fill too. I refer to the uh, the spot left open for him by Dave Watson, the Kiwi international fullback, who I thought would be a major loss to this side today, but they've done a great job without him. Now this is Saunders getting up to play the ball. Antonik out of acting half, who's had a blinder today. They've just let the little bloke run. That's the fifth tackle. They're on their own side of halfway. The kick goes in. 
It should find touch. No, it does a right-hand turn the ball. Back to Brendan O'Meara for South Sydney, who's got some pace. He runs across field, trying to lick up with his winger. Step back on the inside. He's still going, O'Meara. Good run by him. He was felled in a tackle by Don Saunders. He only knows one speed, Brendan O'Meara, doesn't he? Full ball. He does indeed. Trendle pops the ball to Ian Rubin. Ruben hasn't been as involved today as South City would have liked to have seen. Skelly fires the ball off to Trindle. There's no support players there for South Sydney. Trindle had no option other than to go on his own. Ruben winds it up now. Gets it up to the Queensland Crushers 20 metre line on the fifth tackle. He gingerly gets up to play it. Cole Skelly now back to Trindle. He puts boot to ball. Took a long time about it. He had plenty of time. Racing through is the lock forward for South Sydney. They've made a mess of it, the Crushers. A South Sydney... A Crushers penalty, the South Sydney player that was their lock forward, Burns, was racing through in an offside position, according to Kelvin Jeffs. There he is. He said Trindle, Trindle took a lot, long time putting the kick up. I don't know whether it was the fact that he took so long that, it, that that allowed Burns to get offside or whether Burns just... As, as he's watching Dale Trindle kick the ball, surely he slows down and waits until he kicks it to ensure that he's onside. It's no use chasing through there, trying to put pressure on if you're offside. You're, you're going to give the penalty away every time. Just simple little things that they're hurting themselves with, the Rabbits. Michael Francis running back onto the field for South Sydney, as we now see for the Crushers. Paul Woodward in jumper number 25 taking the hit up for them. Antonick. Now it's with Andrew Hamilton. He's tackled 40 out. Antonik again playing the acting half role. He and uh, Teven have been swapping over regularly throughout this game. And there's a very long bullet-like pass out to Craig Wilson for the Crushers, who's had a good game so far in this round seven clash. Phil Howlett and uh, Daryl Trindle combining to bring the Crushers player down. There goes the kick again along the ground, floating towards the touchline. O'Meara once again there for South Sydney, though. And he was taken down on a good tackle by Jason Hudson, who could certainly match the toe of the South Sydney player. Now it's Dean Amos, who brings the ball back towards the centre of the park. He's tackled 25 out from his own try line. Skelly now serves it up to a support player who was Michael Francis. Driscoll. Runs over the top of Antonik, but the little fellow clung to him down low and affected the tackle. 41 out from their own line, they go on the attack. Short kick by Trindle that was regathered by David Penner. He's got Don McLeod in support, but he couldn't get the ball away to the big fella. Now McLeod works the short blind side, and he's got some pace. He puts the grubber kick in, which was taken cleanly by Paul Hubbard for South Queensland. So South Queensland 20 leading South Sydney 6, 22 and a quarter minutes out from full time. Teven gives the ball to Michael Eager who's got the head heavily strapped. Wilson dropped it. After a good run drop the ball, he's had a good game today. Wilson, I don't want to sound like a broken record. You'd agree, Jason, he's been very busy in attack. He has. He's, he's a very skillful player. He half breaks through the tackle there. and He's a player that needs plenty of runners around him because he can get a ball away at any time. But a good short kicking game as well. So the scrum will pack 40 out from the Crushers try line. Handling errors in the game. The Rabbits 9, South Queensland 6. Which tells the story of this day for South Sydney. They now use their back line. That's O'Meara. Got some pace. Put his head down. Was tackled by Shane Cairns. They work a short blindside on the western side of the Sydney football stadium. Tackled 32 metres out was Paul Quinn for South Sydney. Now Cole Skelly offloads to Burns. This is Michael Francis now. 17 out. Trendle. David Penner works the run around with Tricky Trendle who darts across field. He has got some pace. He gets the ball back on the inside to Don McLeod who goes close. McLeod reaches over. Has he scored? Melvin Jeffs is adjudicating now and that is a South Sydney try. Don McLeod 
Ford has reached out and put the ball down. The Crushers players don't like that decision. Don McLeod there again was walking when he touched the ball. I was talking in the first half about the fact that he doesn't hit the ball with any real momentum, but I guess he wasn't really expecting it on that occasion. Put this one down to Daryl Trindle again. He's run 30, 40 metres across field there to drag all the Crushers defenders over and then turn McLeod inside. As the ball is being played, as we've seen, just yep. put it right on the line. That's a try. As the ball is being played, I looked at the South City to attack, and they had four players spread out in the back line from 10 metres this side of, of the touch line, right across the other side. Trindle made up for an extra three plays by running from one side to the other and turning the ball back inside. So Cole Skilly will attempt the conversion from almost right in front. He's about 11 metres out. And that brings some respectability back into this scoreline. Is this the start of the South Sydney comeback? Remembering, of course, the Crushers are down a man. They're playing with 12 men and have done for most of this game. Danny Nutley sent from the field early in the first stanza. We're 19 and a half minutes out from full time in this game. Plenty of time for the Rabbits. From right in front, Cole Skelly has no problems in raising the flags. It's the Crushers 20 leading South Sydney 12 and it could be the Rabbits revival Jason Taylor well they're only 8 points behind aren't they I've got to say they probably don't deserve to be it flatters them a bit that scoreline the Crushers have been infinitely the better side well probably the goal kicking when you think of the fact that the Crushers have, have missed 4 goals and at least 3 of them were, were fairly simple ones they could be leading by 16 a good point you make They told me you probably wouldn't make one, but you did. So it goes down to Trindle now for South Sydney. And this man hitting it up for the Rabbits. It's Michael Francis. Now it's Phil Hallett out of acting half. Darts away. Showed the ball to a support player elected to keep it. 31 out from his own try line. Skelly calls on Peter Driscoll to take some yards. He was met in a crunching tackle by John Jones. Now Skelly, Trindle, Burns. Gets it up just short of the halfway line. Rabbits playing with a spring in their step now. This man Trindle creating some opportunities for his outside man. Penner couldn't handle it. It was a horrible pass, it's got to be said. Up around the melon. In fact, higher than that. We talked before about them just bundying off for one tackle here and there and it's just enough to turn the ball over at crucial times and, and let the crushers let the pressure off they had them under pressure they worked it out to over the halfway line handling errors in this game so far the rabbits 10 south queensland six and souths have been ahead in that statistic all day long so we now wait now for the scrum to pack 40 out from the crushers try line won by them Ooh. Some robust defence there on the Crushers winger, Jason Vent, very, very slowly gets up to play it. Here's John Jones, who spent some time in the blood bin. He's got a, a, a pretty significant bandage under the headgear, a nasty gash on the forehead. So, the Crushers making good yardage here. Anthony, skipping out of acting half, to be 29 out from the Rabbits' try line. Don Saunders now. Teven, John Jones again. Oh, a South player there went in in spectacular fashion. The second row of Paul Quinn. Crushes put boot to ball. Repelled by South City. It goes back to Wilson who throws a long pass to Retzless. Who in turn got it away to a support player who couldn't handle it. That's Michael Eager making a mess of it. Puts the ball on the ground. Probably a hint of a forward with that pass as well. No wonder he couldn't handle it. Watch this pass now from Retzless. There it is. There's the forward. Oh, yeah, forward pass anyway from the 5'8 cans. Handling errors in the match. Recapping that for you at this stage. 10-7. South Sydney have made the more. Handling errors. 16 minutes left in this game. And the Crushers 20 leading South Sydney 12. Rabbits win the scrum. Daryl Trindle now rucking the ball out for Big Don McLeod, who was tackled by Egar. Also, Antonic assisting. Here they come now, South Sydney, through their winger Marty Moore. Tackled a metre short of the halfway line. Now Craig Simon elects to run out of acting half. 
The Rabbits have got to put a try on and do it quickly, turning the ball back on the inside. To David Penner was Paul Quinn. Nice piece of football. Now it's Burns. Met in a good tackle by Cairns for South, uh, for South Queensland. Fifth tackle that was. Skelly. Penner. Trindle. Trindle's the man that's got to create something for South Sydney. The big Don McLeod, who popped an overhead pass back on the inside that was picked up by Brendan O'Meara, who couldn't handle. Well, South Sydney have only got themselves to blame if they are beaten. There's 15 minutes left on the clock. They don't need to score every time they have the ball in their hands. Once they played out that set of six, they were well and truly down there. Put a bomb up, put a grubber towards the end goal, try and come up with a good result. If not, they've got the crushes well and truly deep in their half. Wrestlers plays it for the crushes. Across the field, they work the ball. Cairns offloads to Matt Toshak. Toshak, a good bullocking run. Took South Sydney's lock forward. Darren Burns upfield with him on his back. Cairns, Teven, Saunders. He gets up to the 40 metre stripe. 14 and a half minutes out from full time in this game. The Crushers 20, leading South Sydney 12. There's the kick. Brendan O'Meara will be very busy. Does well to get out of his own in goal area. The South Sydney players, Jason Taylor, are taking forever to get back. There's no one at home. Dean Amos, he cuts them to ribbons and runs upfield. He's tackled 35 out from his own try line by Don Saunders. And the crowd didn't like that tackle either. Now it's a South Sydney lock forward, Burns. Six more, that should South be. South have got it. Yes, referee Jeffs confirms that will be six more tackles. Now winding up the big legs is Matt Parsons for the Rabbits. The crowd here at the Sydney Football Stadium start to get behind the red and green machine. There's a beautiful pass to Phil Hallett. He's in space, Hallett. Puts on the left foot, step it back to Trindle. And the South Sydney skipper, Daryl Trindle, scores his second try of the day. Beautiful play, uh, football there by Phil Hallett. And they come back now to be within striking distance. 20 points to 16, kick to come. The signs have been there for the, the past few minutes, haven't they? The, the Rabbitohs have been making yards at will. That's a beautiful ball from Trindle. He's moved out to second receiver now. He's getting Penner to feed him the ball at 5-8. And with the, the crushes with one player down. It's a long time, 80 minutes, and it really starts to wear you down when you have to defend with one player less. Time and time again. Souths haven't played too well. They haven't put them under too much pressure. But now they're starting to mount a bit and a few crushes players probably getting a little bit tight out there and, and the fact that there's only 12 players on their side he's playing against them. Daryl Trindle's just so quick and, and you need you need your full complement of defenders out there you have to be able to cover everything he's going to do. Cole Skelly from right in front. This will make it a very close scoreline if he's successful with this goal and he's kicked two from three thus far. So Trindle, when he runs, is creating a lot of opportunities for South Sydney. We said it early in the first half, he had to do it. There's the kick and it's successful.